Uh, and it's really just taking those experiences and taking the constructive feedback that you get from them to improve mm -hmm. your own playstyle. That's like, right. that's what I took. I took that from that um, Icarus game that you reviewed uh, last week, Zath, and I sort of used that to improve, you know, the gameplay that I do on all my destroyers. Great. It's really, it's really not just, it's not just confirmation bias, it's taking people saying that, oh, you did this right, and then also looking at, hey, what did I do wrong, and mm -hmm. then using that to improve what you do. You have to That's know right. what you're doing right and wrong, because the reason yep. you have to remember what you're doing right is because due to the nature of randoms, it's, you know, it's, it's a different animal compared to co-op and ranked and clan battles. Each one of them, some things are the same, but what you can get away with in each one of them is different. Yep. And learning what it is you're doing right and getting that reinforced enables you to spot that opportunity when it comes by again, which it all assuredly will within probably just a couple of battles. Yep. If you're used to that, you see the opportunity and you take it. Now we yeah. got uh, 45 seconds left on our level two hype train to see if we can get to level three. Remember, if we get to five, we try to extend the stream a bit here. And uh, I pull out the dirty, the extra dirty water and we give out some really good prizes. But check out Stevie. He is just- Oh, loving. he is so He's happy right now. This cat is ecstatic. <laughs> all about this. This cat is like, this is a guy that remembers we were once worshipped as gods. He gets it. <laughs> <laughs> no. we, we will not eat his face in the middle of the night this <laughs> night. <laughs> tomorrow is an entirely different matter, but if history shows, he will he will buy into this again tomorrow and he will live. Yes. Chief Benjamin says, as long as I'm doing wrong and still doing right and winning, I'm good. Well, the thing is, like, you always do right things and wrong things and that's what i love about this game is that there's a lot that you can learn from the process of doing it uh it's almost like especially when at the heights you're competitive um what you end up with is a lot of you know you're, you're trying to minimize your mistakes you're trying to minimize the, mis the things that you do wrong uh so that you know you have a, you have a good game but there is really no such thing as the perfect game no. one thing that's really good about a game like World of Warships compared to games, you know, compared to games like you know Call of Duty and first-person shooters and things like that, that are mm. such instantaneous reactions are required. It's a lot more difficult to watch other people and learn how to get the job done. Yep. World of Warships is a game that requires a significant amount of thought, even if it's you know instinct. You took a lot of thought to make it instinct. It's a game that's easy to play. It's difficult to master, but being able to watch the mistakes that other people make in, in more or less real time as they're happening, right? that plays a huge part. You have to be willing, you know, I for the longest time had no use for watching other people play World of Warships until the first time I watched the replay theater. And I was picking up mistakes that these people were making that I realized I make too. Yep. Just the understanding that you make the mistake is sometimes the only thing you need. That's right. I paused it for a second. I, I forgot to take a screenshot, so we're gonna fix that as soon as I can find where you are. There you are. You hate this book, but I play it to practice. I hate the Yamato too. Uh, that's the uh, Massa, I think. I don't really hate the Yamato. I mean, I mean, I'm... it. I I have that's I have difficulty at times with the lead because the shelf light you know, trajectory, the specifications of it is yeah, so really much different. Oh. Mm -hmm. But you know, a couple of battles in, you you, you get the feel for that back, and Definitely. you know it's it's really no longer a problem. Yeah. Like, Definitely, but... we don't need to know about you whacking your cat's muscle. Like, I... what? What? Look at the shockwave coming out from the the blast. I love the new water effects. Let's look at it from top down for a sec. Like, oh yeah, I, I remember the that. first time I um, went into battle after the new the, the new visuals were in, and I you know my ship was rocking in the waters. The water was all choppy everywhere before the battle started, and I was like, okay, that's cool, right? Oh, I mean, that's just that's just beautiful. Of course, we can't go by that without talking about the Yamato itself. Of course, it is one of the original two tier ten battleships, mm -hmm. ninety seven point two kHP. It is armed with the second largest guns in the game. Yeah, it used to be uh, the largest. <laughs> used to be the largest, then the Shikishima arrived. 460mm guns, more, most important factor, 32mm overmatch. 
What that means is, if a battleship such as a Conqueror or a Republic or a Thunder tries mm -hmm. to bow into you, you can simply bypass their armor mm -hmm. because they're coated in 32 millimeter plating. However, there is one other significant thing that the Yamato does have as a weakness is that really, really large citadel. It yeah. is a massive oct octagon. It sticks out of the water. Called and the it's cheek. It's called the ch and the cheek as well. 410 millimeter belt, sure, but it's still very easy to punch with battleship guns or anything that has enough penetration to. Oh but the for. super heavy AP of the Des Moines can citadel it quite easily from a certain range. You know, the 12 inch guns can citadel it very easily. You know, Last I, you night, know yeah. Alaska Last and Kronstadt do it all the time. Oh, Last yeah. night in clan battles, I took a Napoli straight down a Yamato's throat. It was so freaking hilarious. And one thing that people don't realize, yes, the Yamato, Musashi, Shikishima, they have good armor, but they mm. don't have it where it actually counts. If yeah, you can yeah. get their side, they die very, Yamato very quickly. Yamato is very much a long to medium range ship. You, you don't brawl in it. And that's the thing about it. I see some people that like to do secondary builds on the Yamato. Once upon a time, Yamato had really good long range secondaries. But the problem is by the time you're in secondary range, um, it's very possible that you can be cheek sitted out from the opponent. Mm -hmm. So, like, y you know, it it's it's kind of one of those juxtapositions where you, you, you unfortunately can't play to one of those uh, those strengths, especially like the Shikishima, which has even better secondaries. Well, to be fair, with the captain still rework, they're more viable as secondary ships today than they were two years ago. But that still mm. doesn't mean you need to completely spec into them as secondary builds. The only thing you really need to do is honestly you know, take the captain skill. I mean, one of the greatest things about the Japanese battleships is the oh. accuracy of the guns. So you really, you know, you want to build into what it does the best. And let's be honest, secondaries are not what it does the best. Right. Oh my, Caleb. I don't necessarily disagree with. I mean, the secondaries are good, but the problem is the platform they're mounted on. Yeah. The Yamato hull. Yeah. That's right. Like that's right. secondaries. Gaily underscore night gifted a tier one sub to MRG underscore Which is all well and good. The problem is that hull is so vulnerable for brawling yeah. that right. it's kind of like, yeah, I can brawl. But I sort of can't at the same time. I, I would build into Shikishima for secondaries before I would build into tier one sub to M underscore yeah. underscore yeah. N underscore yeah. Just due to the nature of the secondaries plus the fact that your guns are massive and overmatch everything. So <laughs> right. you know, you know, getting up in somebody's face in Shikishima is going to pay off a lot more spectacularly than it's going to pay off in Yamato. That's night gifted but just for the simple fact that boy. you have the ability to kill whatever it is that's trying to kill you significantly faster. Because right. you said it all things much harder. Now this is weird. I'm sorry guys. I thought I had fixed the alert box so that it didn't uh, Gaelic underscore night gifted a tier that, one but maybe it's because it's a gift itself. You can try turning the volume down even farther. Maybe. I don't know. I was going to say something about the positioning, but actually this is a pretty decent position for what's going on. Gifted a tier one it's a very Oh, that position. Kitakaze is about to hate life. <laughs> oh, no. Because <laughs> that Kitakaze is just sitting there waiting to die. And... Yeah. And he did. <laughs> of course, the other thing we do have to note about the Yamato, as we saw earlier, is the accuracy. Now, Japanese battleships do have a very unique dispersion curve. The mm -hmm. dispersion curve starts out kind of wide, but it's sort of instead of blooming out as much as other dispersion curves do, it's actually and actually yep. um, the sort of the dispersion curve is sort of narrower over yeah. longer ranges. Well, yeah, it uh, encourages you to be almost oof. a sniper. This, oh. this, this are they going to get there before he moves? That's the question. They do two overpunts. Mm-hmm. Hey, I, I, I see that. That's a guy who realized. Oh crap! <laughs> it's like, oh, yeah, crap, pretty much. Well, I had a moment like that in my lightning with the buffalo. I come around the corner, I'm ready I'm like, oh, yeah, there's a buffalo there. I gotta run. <laughs> he still eats one of my torpedoes for some reason, though. Uh, little bit of it. little bit of, of salt in chat, too, some of you guys caught. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> hey, Viper Blaze, I'm doing positive. fine, thanks. How are you doing? I'm gonna guess the, uh, the Kitakaze. Kitakaze was not too happy. Yeah. Too happy. I, I would guess that the kid, it would be the Kitakaze, but that's his own fault. <laughs> yeah, he's he, the he one who did kind of just sit there. Far. Sitting still is a, is a viable tactic. 
depending on the circumstances. When you have six people shooting at you in a destroyer sitting still broadside to them, it's not a viable tactic. Or, <laughs> or if you're up against the T-Rex. Oh, that was so funny. I mean, I, 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 I spotted it spotted him just sitting there like he was well before he died and I just thought to myself yeah this is gonna end well and I just waited for the death <laughs> right I mean now, I was is... so convinced it was coming I didn't even bother to comment on it because I knew how this was going to end he put himself in a situation he had no chance of getting out of it. that is very risky well the Massachusetts has done it as well yep that was very risky, I said, oh. because if he had a turret ready for you, that could have... I mean, it wouldn't have killed you. It would have done a lot of damage, though. And now what's the Shimano doing? Because he's going to fly broadside. As I, I mentioned I, earlier, the Citadel He wins. wants to die. Yeah. I, I don't know. There, there's that Question one hit. Him. Now... Yeah, he hasn't turned enough to avoid what's coming. I need to note something here. And that's the fact that SF did not do what a lot of players do, and I, I'm kind of guilty of this, too. Uh, first of all, you took a shell right in the, the number two turret there. Ouch. Uh, but you're doing what a lot of Yamato players uh, fail to do, which is you're you're not trying to get your third turret into the yeah. shot. If yeah. you try to get your third turret into the shot up close and personal with the enemy, uh, you basically end up taking a Citadel in the cheek. Uh, yeah, SFNL says, quick. I don't want to let that happen, so he's turning. Yeah, a, a, a big thing for any battleship that has not the greatest you know, turret, you know, uh, layouts is understand that using that third turret probably gets you killed right right it almost always will um, yep. the other thing is if you're just using your two turrets and you're sort of angling you end up bouncing shots into into that fairly thick yep. armor main belt yep. it's 410 millimeters sloped to 20 degrees yep. and I don't know. Shimano was so dead. Well, did you see just a second ago? He fired all three turrets right into the tip of SFNL's bow. It penetrated, but it did not go into a citadel. Had he been trying to get that third turret off, that could have no, ended no. his life. Oh, uh, he'd have been yeah. dead. Now, you he'd don't need to zoom in. He already had been sunk if he'd have been trying to bring his third turret. Yeah. No need to zoom in, but you did, and you got two citadels off him. Now, use his hold to stop quickly so you can get the cap. So that's what there you go. Going to do. Yeah, that's that's what you should do, because yeah. it takes Yamato so long to slow down. Exactly. <laughs> With seventy-two thousand tons. It's... Well, and it, it's its propulsion system is such that it takes forever to get going and forever to slow down. Once you get that yeah. kind of you know tonnage going, it it takes an act of God to stop it. It's a beefy boy. Yeah, it's a beefy or boy. Or or just another uh, Yamato. You know what really surprised me though? The hmm. Riga didn't push out. Maybe, I mean, smart play to him. The Riga didn't push out because there's a Massachusetts and a Buki and a Jutland. But at the same time, he had SFNL's broadside there. And even if he peaked for just a few seconds, he could have delivered some pretty nasty hits before peeking back into cover. Right. So why he didn't do that, I mean, probably just a smarter choice because, you know, you got, you have three ships coming for you and now there's a fourth. So, I mean, mm -hmm. this Riga's dead. Um, yep. Yeah. Viper Blades is asking questions. So in close duels, you want to aim for the Citadel at bow level. I don't know what you mean by bow level. Uh, you, you aim for Citadels at water level. Um, and the Citadel is typically from front turret to rear turret in a giant box. And every ship's a little bit different. You have to look at the armor layout and armor viewer to figure that out. But generally speaking, uh, yes. Although... Uh, SF zoomed in, and you, you typically don't want to zoom in. You want to stay zoomed out, kind of like this is level zoom right now, because your guns can depress lower yeah. at uh, at close range like that. Yeah, that's something very odd. I didn't notice. With yes. The camera view. It's like um, it's like when you go zoomed in, it's like you can't depress your guns. It is very strange. Yeah, uh, generally once I start getting to five kilometers and. and lower in range i stopped using the zone and right. that's just because I, I learned that you know everything looked perfect but somehow i was completely missing or i wasn't getting the results that i should have gotten based yep. on what the visual was telling me and that's because it's just it doesn't work right if you're zoomed viper in blades, the guns just don't work viper blades check out the link i just posted in chat there that's to a uh, zach chat all about the armor profile and how you can use that to learn more about the ship for someone who's newer to the game like you this might be a very uh very good tool one thing i do do want to note is four overpen hits on that vampire from mm. front two turrets by the way that's the other thing about yamato's dispersion not only does it have a very good dispersion curve 
it also has the highest signal rating of any battleship in the game, 2.1. Mm -hmm. Now, the differentiation there, of course, that, and this is what I feel like people keep messing up, is that the dispersion curve and the sigma are two completely different variables. Think of mm -hmm. the dispersion curve as your accuracy and the sigma as your precision, right? Yeah. When you are talking about dispersion, you're talking about the general area where the shells can fall. When you're talking about sigma, it's just the general grouping of the shells. So the, mm -hmm. higher, the higher your sigma, the more likely shells are to fall towards the center of that dispersion curve. So yep. it doesn't really matter if you have like 1.5 sigma or like 1.0 sigma. Like in the case of the Navarrosisk, uh, just, just as a referential example, it's 1.4 sigma, sure. But not only is it 10 guns, it's battlecruiser dispersion. That means mm -hmm. those shells are more likely to fall within a smaller given area yep. than say, if it was on battleship dispersion. Yeah, yeah, accuracy, the way that we look at it, takes all those things and RNG into account to explain why you sometimes have perfect everything and get nothing for it. <laughs> yeah, it's always and fun. then you have a snapshot that you took without even paying attention and you quadruple citadel something and send them back to port. Right. Speed does uh, not have an effect on dispersion. It's not like World of Tanks where you stop and you wait for that dispersion circle to get tighter. Um, but what, what uh, these gents are talking about is, in general, when you fire your guns, you know, you've got an ellipse. You've got an area in which uh, your shells will land. The tighter the dispersion, the smaller that ellipse will be. And then as far as uh, Sigma is concerned, that means within that ellipse, the, 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 he the higher the Sigma, the more closely grouped those shells will be within that ellipse. So those those two work hand in hand to figure out how accurate the guns are going to be. And then you have RNG, be. which is what's responsible for you firing your guns, and your battleship 16-inch gun goes flying out to the left of the barrel as soon as you fire. <laughs> right. <laughs> GK memes, anyone? I mean, okay, yeah. They because gave it. accuracy is a thing, apparently. It's like, hey, GK hey, is so I... inaccurate, it is accurate. It's, it's kind of likely on in that regard. It's so stupidly inaccurate that you're gonna get hits in spite of yourself. Now SF is just, just you know, farming. SF's just being SF. SF mm -hmm. is just causing pain because he can now. <laughs> That's correct, Cthulhu. If your dispersion was tight enough, if your dispersion was, say, one meter, then who cares what your sigma is, right? Your sigma because would be all around the circle of that one sigma, uh, uh, or that, that, one, uh, that one meter, at the worst. Well, the you're still going to hit everything because it falls within that one meter anyways. Ouch. Speaking of falling things, what is this Bismarck doing? Like, uh, I, I, was, I was running clan battles for Kitten's clan last night, and Ooh. I was laughing as I was smoke firing and hitting a vampire that I couldn't even see, vampire 2 that I couldn't even see, just mm -hmm. with regularity because um, of the way, you know, dispersion and everything works, but I was firing at other ships and watching my shells land all over God's green earth. Pausing it for a second, because if you look at where SF stopped, he stopped to try to block the Azumo shots, but he went too far forward. Uh, this might hurt. Let's see what happens. Ow. There's there's a cheek set it out right there. Hey, just because it's SFNL, I hope it does. Because, <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know, SFNL needs to understand that he is human. So, Viper, that's a loaded question. Is higher Sigma better or worse? If you know how to aim and where to aim, higher Sigma is better. If you suck at aiming, lower Sigma is better. Because if you suck at aiming, then in other words, your, your shells are scattered more within that ellipse. And you have a better chance of hitting a target if you're not really good at aiming with a lower Sigma. But, you know, one of the ways to combat dispersion and Sigma and RNG is to simply play closer. You know, understand oh. how to protect your ship while playing closer. You know, you're I thought you were gonna going to say get good. Be... <laughs> well, that's that's part of getting good is understanding where you can put your ship. That's that's part of getting good. Such things always about maximizing the amount of damage you can deal while taking as low damage as possible. Exactly. Yep. Something this Bismarck's not doing a very good job of. Because... You know, I, I I don't want to use the words get good in anything that SFNL is part of because that just seems really dumb. <laughs> I mean, so if the, if the Massachusetts, not oh god no, you just got a crack in it, and of course you've got Yamamoto on here. Look at this, guys. Oh, look at no, his look is, at his reload. He's got a heal for two minutes. 
Watch, oh, this watch his reload here when he fires at the Azumo, guys. <laughs> this is going to end so badly for the Azumo. He's well, got 20 seconds reload. It usually ends badly for Azumo. <laughs> <laughs> Correction, any battleship that somehow ends up get, getting called flat broadside to a Yamato, because these guns are no joke. Well, oh, and Azumo's side armor is, unfortunately. So, really Viper... Far. The Fuso Sigma is, is a bit of an enigma amongst the Japanese battleship line because Fuso and, and Amagi have lower Sigma but more guns, so we call those the Japanese shotguns. Um, whereas the Nagato that comes after and the Kago and the Miyogi before the, the Fuso uh, are, are not that way. They're much more, you know, accurate with Sigma. So basically, if you do better in the Fuso, like I do, uh, than you do in the Kango, then that probably means, you know, it's, it has to do with your, your ability to aim. <laughs> and playing Amagi is not suffering. They, they do take some getting used to, so if you've been yeah. you know, spending time playing other ships and then you take out... I mean, people have heard me raging over my Fuso play because I'm oh, really yes. good at it. But I if I've been that. playing a bunch of destroyers and then I play Fuso, it's... it generally does not go as well as I think. <laughs> so, it's Viper, yeah. if you suck at hitting things in the Congo, you're going to love the Fuso. Because you have so many shells to just fire at things, you're gonna hit something, which is great. You just have to remember that you know, due to the armor schemes of the things that you tend to face in Fuso's you know matchmaking spread, a lot of the times you're not going to get the results you expect to get just because you're going to overpin the crap out of things instead of landing you know hard citadel hits and pens. Uh, trying to learn Japanese battleships first—that sounds terrifying. Uh, it was <laughs> terrifying. Personally, I would focus on the either the American, the German, or the uh, Russian battleships first. Just okay. SFNL just completely owning another team when making it look so absurdly simple. Right? Yeah, it's just... Oh, it's not fair! It isn't! It never is! <laughs> I mean, credit where credit's due, the man's great. Like, I honestly felt bad for the Zuma because he's like, why is this Yamato firing every 20 seconds? <laughs> Right? Well, there's a reason for that. Yamamoto. That's right. That's right. You've had some good games? Good. Yes, they definitely do reward positioning. Absolutely. Oh. As any battleship.